Hi everyone, it's Frank Andrews and this is the second podcast for OK Tulsa. It is October 5th, 2020. It is a Monday. It is my second day here in Tulsa and today was a rather eventful day in regards to just having a lot to do but not too much of a wild stories or anything of that nature. I had, I got up relatively early. I had trouble sleeping last night and there was people outside once again from the bar making a ton of noise. I'm starting to regret my decision of getting an Airbnb that is directly above the bar because people were just all night to 2 to 3 a.m. just outside talking and whatnot. I don't want to be um, kind of a negative Nancy or when people say party pooper or anything of that nature, but I'm just trying to sleep. Who's going out on Sunday night? That's all I want to know. That's really what I want to know. Who is going out on a Sunday night till 3 a.m. partying? They really have to start questioning what they're doing with their lives. I would say so. If you, I mean, maybe they maybe they have it right. Maybe just go out, live free. Who cares? Perhaps I'm living it wrong. But I just think, you know, there's a couple things like getting day drunk during the day or even on the weekends unless you're like partying on vacation it seems it seems kind of low when people get drunk by themselves it's quite sad as well like not a lot like a little buzz I'm sh that's fine people who just get plastered by themselves that's quite sad and getting drunk on the weekdays but I mean if you're going happy hour with your friends or co-workers that's different but this is just this didn't seem like that kind of situation but anyways, I I just put some headphones in once again, got to sleep. I woke up, ate a nice breakfast, had coffee, tea, read. It was nice, stretched, etc. And then I had to head off to my co-working space because I had orientation today. And it was nice. The, I was curious to see how downtown Tulsa would be on a Monday, if it was going to be as empty as it was Sunday. And turns out, it is, which I don't mind because it's quite nice when you're walking around and you don't really have to worry about all these people or cars flying around. Like you can kind of cross streets even when the crosswalk sign isn't there. I Jay walked in front of a cop. He didn't care. I thought about it, but I was like, I don't think he will really care. I'm not really causing too much trouble. He let me go. So it was, it was nice. There was sketchy people, but they usually is don't really show me attention where I just say hey how's it going and usually that's enough to keep them kind of they usually I don't know it doesn't feel as threatening when I introduce it or say something but I don't know if it's bad to invite them into conversation but I don't think so someone did say something to me but I don't know what he said I think he just said stay up and I think that was I didn't know how to take that but I'm guessing that he's just wanting me to never be down, stay up. That was my assumption. So I really appreciated some homeless man told me that. Stay up and, and mumbled some other things, but I just heard stay up. I guess we hear what we wanna hear. He may have said something rude, I don't know. So I got to the co-working spot. It's about an hour away. It was a nice brisk morning. It was cool. I really felt good walking. It's about a mile away, so I got my cardio in. Mile there, mile back. I met the orientation directors or the the individuals who set it up there were two lovely ladies they were very kind very helpful the co-working space is fantastic free coffee some is a plus and it was laid back and relaxed i do not know if it's usually that empty or if it is just because it the covid time is is maybe messing things up i don't know but i like that it was pretty empty like it was easy to find a spot i could set up anywhere even got a chance to have a stand-up desk and it was pretty laid back in terms of regulations which I enjoyed as well mask on and obviously when in community spaces but when you get to sit down in your desk if you're six feet apart you can take off your mask which I enjoyed because I don't want to wear it all eight hours especially I have the one that goes over over the ear and so it pulls on it after a while it starts to be ear it starts to irritate my ear and hurt so I was happy about that but yeah the I would highly recommend it. I'm going to 36 degrees north. That is where I have, that is what I chose to go and it's great. The district is fantastic as well. It's pretty hipster over there. It was nice. People were kind. 
And I also got to ride a Lime scooter slash bike today. I don't know the proper term, but it was extremely fun to ride. Those things go very fast. I just had to be careful of not using it too much because even though it is relatively cheap for one ride, if you ride it constantly, like I rode there and back, it's $4 each ride. So it's not too bad, but if I did that going there, back to the apartment, back to the working spot, getting lunch, etc., and riding all around, you can see how that is going to add up and eventually be more than my payment for my car, minus insurance though. But yeah, I just want to be careful of that. So my plan is just to walk there, walk back every now and then. It's not too bad. I do like riding it though, because when there are kind of more sketchier characters, you can just ride away really quickly. Can't catch you. Those things really do fly. I just do not want to fall off. I was in San Antonio once and there was a bunch of tourists who really enjoyed riding those bikes, those scooters, electric scooters, the Lime ones, and I saw multiple people fall off. They would hit a, a bump and fly down. Um, one fell in the street, thankfully she didn't get hurt or get ran over, but it was very chaotic. Speaking of that, I did have, in terms of San Antonio, I'm going to go off track and not talk about my day really quickly. Well, I don't know if it's going to be quickly, to be honest. So there was an Uber driver in San Antonio. We were downtown. This man was, I don't know how he was doing all these tasks. And I'm not sure how he's never got into an accident. My assumption is he has got into many accidents. But this particular time and the car he was using then show no signs of an accident. And why I say that is because he was driving. He had a TV monitor hooked up. And he was playing, he was selecting movies on Amazon and he found, saw whatever, 19, I don't know how many movies they have now. He was watching Saw, he was talking to us, he had two phones, he was doing Uber on the phone, he was messaging his girlfriend on the other phone, he was also smoking weed and he had, he was also changing uh, the music at the same time while driving so he's doing all those things at one time texting talking to us smoking weed watching a movie changing the music he wasn't an octopus i do not know how he managed to do it but he got us there safely he was um a great chap fun to talk to he was really laid back probably because he was stoned out of his mind but he was chill all i asked for an uber driver is to get us there safely and to be friendly and to have a nice conversation in which he fulfilled all of those. So back to Tulsa. So after the co-working, I flew back on the line bike, had, a lun had lunch at my apartment, had to pick up my Amazon packages because I had to get an iron. My clothes are terribly wrinkled. Thankfully, my white t-shirt magically didn't get too wrinkled because I didn't want to show up too terrible for the orientation and get kicked out or something of that nature. And then I just worked and edited a bunch of their various blogs and videos I'm trying to post. I posted a couple things, so feel free to check that out. I spoke with my father. Supposedly, his truck got stolen. I don't know if it was during daylight or nighttime, but he had this, this truck, which he really loves. He's had since the early 2000s, it's a Chevrolet, silver, lowered. He has rims and a stereo, and it's very popular where he is at in Orange County. And finally, someone saw the opportunity to steal it. So I'm hope, I hope he gets it back because it was, it is probably most likely going to be a classic because of the body, I don't know. I'm not too into cars, so I can't get into specific specifics. He was planning on saving it for his favorite grandson. He already has a favorite, but he wanted to make that a classic. The funny thing about cars too is I've always had men who come up to me or when I'm you know, they automatically assume for some reason that I'm going to know about cars. And so they start getting into very specific details about the horsepower, 
um, various, I, that's the only thing I can remember. Other things about the car, in terms of the machinery, the way it works, the body types, the years, the brands, and the models, not the brands. I can at least do the brands, but the models and the years, I get lost, and I just say, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, great gas mileage. It's pretty bad. I do not know how to change a tire. I do not know how to change my oil. I just recently figured out how to pop my hood. But that was very recent. And the only reason I figured that out was because the man who came to check out my vehicle for the inspection before I turned in my car when the lease ended, he popped the hood. And I said, oh, that's how I popped the hood? Can you show me? And he showed me and then... I learned, but it's not essential. I do like classic cars though. My uncle has a few. Well, he just bought one recently. It was the weirdest, oddest, most peculiar choice of vehicles because he had a classic truck. I don't know, I think it was a GM. And for some odd reason, the individual who was selling it, my uncle who was buying it, wanted a paint that gave it the uh, the look that it was rusty but instead of actually being rusty they painted it was light blue like a baby blue and they had this red paint mark that looked like it was scratched off to give it the appearance that it was rusty so I thought it needed work I was like hey I thought you said this car was going to be because he was like it's all good it needs no work and I saw it I was like well you just got to get the the body done get some paint and he said no that's the look I wanted it's paint they painted it to look rusty I said, are you joking? Or I thought he was being facetious, but turns out he wasn't. He was actually being extremely serious. So I tried to not make any more comments about it and said, interesting. But that's the end of that tale. But otherwise, um, not too much. I had some food. I had tuna out of a little pouch. It was very flavorless. I also had an apple. It was delicious. And some vegetable juice. I didn't want to go out today. I have to save some money, so I'm planning on going out to eat sometime during the week. I'm hoping to get a date. I'm trying hard. I downloaded all, all three. Downloaded all three dating apps. Bumble, Hinge, Tinder, if you're familiar with them, they're a little different here, which is quite nice. Uh, from my previous experience, Tinder is more of a young person's game. And it's not as serious, perhaps it was great when I was young, if you're just trying to hook up or just have people to party with and whatnot, have fun with. Bumble is, there's a lot of attractive people on there, but majority of them are just trying to boost their social media. And then Hinge is more serious. You can find a career woman there. They're a lot older. Um, for this is from a man's perspective. They're older, they're educated, they have a, a career, they're more serious. And it's a little more of a serious dating app. But I've had, I haven't had success at all, hence why I'm single. But I'm trying on all of them. It's a little different here though. There's a lot of mix on Tinder, mix on Bumble, and Hinge is still the same. There's a few people that I was trying to talk to, but for some reason, one of the women already deleted me. I didn't say anything. I didn't reply. I think I didn't reply fast enough. She's quite boring to talk to though. She was younger. So I don't know if she just didn't know. It's hard. Once you reach a certain age, unless the, unless the person's more mature, I'm not very mature, but if someone's under 25, when you're past that, it's hard to relate. It's very hard because it's, you guys are in different generations. You don't really have too much in common. So it was one of those things like it was fine, but the conversation was just dull. So I just was busy, didn't have time to reply. And then I looked back on my Bumble account and she was no longer there. So I just assumed that she deleted me, which is fine. Though it does make you go like, what the hell? Because no one likes to get deleted, but um otherwise that's about it i'm trying to push for this a date with an older woman she seems pretty cool but we'll see it's very difficult especially during covid time and 
the problem with the dating apps, it's just so challenging because no one really makes commitments. They just kind of talk and then the conversation eventually fades away. Then you spark up a new conversation with someone else and you're just caught in this cycle, this endless cycle. So that's that. I do have some things that I'm hoping to plan this week in terms of more so for the weekend, but I am going to try to find what I can do during the week to try to have, to try to experience Tulsa a little more. One of the women at the co-working spot place told me about some breakfast and some place called Utica Square. It is in Midtown Tulsa and I'm assuming she said a lot of the restaurants and shops there are historic. I'm a fan of history, so I do want to check it out. And I love brunch and breakfast, and she had breakfast there with her husband. So she was raving about it, so I really want to try it. I may try to do that this sometime this weekend. I'm going to the Phil Burke Museum already on Saturday, so I'm very excited about that. I'll have a lot to say probably about it as well. Some say it's haunted. I don't. I doubt that, but... They say statues follow you, but the statues always have that kind of illusion, especially if you're already going in with that preconceived notion that everything's haunted. I'll ask around though and see if anyone has tales, any of the employees. But otherwise, I just have to iron my clothes. I posted on YouTube for the first video. I did my Airbnb tour. Be sure to check that out. And I did a blog on Kai Vietnamese cuisine, the first restaurant I ate at while I was here. So if you want to read about that, it's on oketulsa.org as well. But yeah, I just have to iron my clothes tonight. I may try to play some video games, but I'm not sure I still have to exercise. Otherwise, yeah, not, not too many things to really say. So, on that note, goodbye. Like, subscribe, share the podcast if you hate it. Then you have terrible judgment. No, share it with somebody you don't hate. Just share it. Spam somebody with it. Spam. Food in a can, ham in a can. At least they tell us it is ham. I'm not sure if that's the truth, but that's what they say. Anyways, thank you for listening. This is Frank Andrews, and this is OK Tulsa. Adios. That means bye for anyone who doesn't understand basic Spanish.